Let's talk about our democracy for a minute. <laughs> but let's do it in a way that makes the snowflakes heads explode. Let me be clear before this podcast begins. We are loud, loud, proud, proud, and do not give a fuck. This is the Tony Michaels podcast. Real and raw political and social commentary. The freedom to oppress the rights of other people is not liberty. You shit-eating moron. Ah, the smell of freedom of speech. This is the Tony Michaels Podcast, and this is Tony Michaels. Hey, Tony, fuck them. Ace, my God, detective. You know what? We are so lucky. Our democracy is safe because these people are so fucking dumb. Just the dumbest of the dumbest of the dumb. They're they're just stupid. (laughs) This morning, the the House GOP decided it was going to be a good idea to have another cock committee hearing. Uh, about Hunter, about Hunter Biden, Hunter Biden, Hunter Biden and his huge hog, and uh, Im- impeachment. We're gonna impeach Joe Biden. Keep going, like this is fucking fantastic. Government shutting down. They can't do shit. They can't get fucking funding for Israel or Ukraine to protect democracies around the world. Why would they want to fucking do anything to defend ours or help our democracy? Huh? Why? Why would they want to do that kind type of shit? They have no inter- they have no interest in doing their jobs. Absolutely none. And frankly, I'm I'm kind of excited about it. I know you're like, Tony, they need to be doing their jobs. They need to be working on legislation. Can you imagine what these fuck type of legislation these fucking idiots are gonna come up with? The best evidence they have, apparently, of uh against any of this stuff. Is a picture of a, a doctored picture of a Blackberry? A, a black ba- Who in the fuck? Who in the fuck still has a Blackberry? Okay. Number one. Number two, it's a picture of WhatsApp. Like it's a picture, apparently, of the screeners. I don't know. Who gives a fuck? These people don't have evidence. And they're one of their star witnesses, Bob Alinsky. Oh my God. You're going to hear this name, Babalinsky, Babalinsky, Babalinsky. Bab- They're probably going to make some MAGA movie, movie. You know what I mean? Like Daily Wire, that Nazi rag is going to be like, no one else will make this piece of shit movie, so we'll make it. And it'll be called like uh, The Big Babalinsky. <laughs> Apparently this guy, this guy, I, I'm not making this shit up. This is what was said, Jamie Raskin. Said it this morning. Cassidy Hutchinson is being sued by Bobolinsky because she's accusing him of meeting someone in a mask or a ski mask or some shit. These fucking maglodites, man. These Cheeto humping fuck nuggets. But Bobolinsky went to the presidential debate as Donald Trump's guest, <laughs> their star witness, as a guest for Donald Trump. He sat next to Mark Meadows, and I'm not making this up, Kid Rock. (laughs) What the fuck, man? What the fuck? He sat next to Kid Rock. I'm not making that shit up. That's fucking real. Jamie Raskin has a goddamn photo of it. (laughs) Oh, man. Oh, fuck. And we thought Kid Rock was, you know, long gone from the from the MAGA narrative because he's ticked up the whole Bud Light boycott. And then it turns out that guy was drinking queer beer the whole time. <laughs> oh, my fucking God. Oh, these fucking shit eaters, man. And you're going to see people in comments in your comment section def- defending this shit. <laughs> They're gonna be defending this shit. Oh, it's it's 
absolute fucking bonkers with these nut jobs. Now, I will say, I will say that the Democrats are causing their own little circus, which I'm excited to see. Jared Moskowitz, Congressman Jared Moskowitz, uh, showed up at the Capitol on Capitol Hill today with a Putin mask on, a rubber Halloween Putin mask, which I'm go I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie to the audience. My very first thought when I saw Jared Moskowitz walking around in a Putin mask, other than why isn't MAGA like absolutely bowing down and worshiping? Okay. Maybe my second thought was, I'm like, this has totally been my zealous's idea. I'm not kidding you. I bet you, I bet you so much fucking money that this is a Ben Mizellus idea. Oh, Moskowitz is always on with the, with fucking Ben on Midas Touch, and they're talking shit. You know, I know, I know, Ben. And in the background, there was a text chain. There's a fucking text chain somewhere, Ben. I, I love it. I love it. I love this. Honestly, I fucking love the shit out of this. <laughs> I can't tell you how much I love this type of fuckery. Where Jared Moskowitz is rocking around Capitol Hill. <laughs> absolutely taunting these megalodites with, with a fucking boot mask. <laughs> and I almost bet it's a Ben Mizellus idea. This is something fucking Ben Mizellus would text. I guarantee goddamn to it. Guarantee goddamn... Ben! Ben, challenge me on this. Challenge me. Come on the show. I'll, I'll fucking. We'll get to the bottom of this. Are you? Uh, are you the one that had the Putin mask up your idea up your sleeve? <laughs> I should text him. I should text him and see if this was uh, his idea. A hundred percent. I'm going to show you a picture and video of Jared Mo Moskowitz walking around in the fucking in the fucking Putin mask. Um, but I. That's that was my first fucking thought. My first fucking thought is this is this has got to be a my zealous. This is a been my zealous idea if I've ever fucking seen one. <laughs> oh man. Whew. Let's see what other news do we have? <clears throat> oh, another star witness. Another another star witness. Republican star witness. Uh, he's testifying from federal prison today. That's how. Uh, and and it's not like testifying from federal prison because. He didn't commit like con artist type crimes, right? He didn't commit fraud. This guy is testifying because he's a really good <laughs> witness. I don't know. I don't know why they thought it was a good idea to have people testify from prison. They, I don't know what. And, and like, hey, this is our star witness. This is the guy you should trust with the truth. Wink. Like literally, Jamie Raskin has to point out that not not he's not calling him a con man and con artist because he would normally say that about a witness. He's like, I'm just repeating what's in the court documents about his fucking federal cases. And the reason why he's in federal prison is because he's a con artist. <laughs> so a fucking judge said, what, I mean, what do you want? It's in the, it's here's the de here's the documents. Here's the, do here's the evidence. And this is the guy that they're going to have testify for him. Their star witness. Now the Democrats' witness, on the other hand, is Lev Parnes. If you if that name sounds familiar to you, it's because Lev Parnes used to be on the Trump side. Lev Parnes is what was one of Rudy Giuliani's lackeys. Lev Parnes is a Ukrainian-born uh, American uh, Ukrainian national here in the in these in this parts. He, he explains it in his uh, in his opening statement that he came here when he was a child. Uh, from the USSR, the Ukraine part of the USSR. And he grew up here and he, he became one of Tr uh, Trump and Giuliani's lackeys. And he was tasked with going overseas to try to drum up lies about Hunter Biden. So that way Donald Trump could beat Joe Biden in the election. Says it out loud. He even calls out one of the congressmen sitting on the committee that's going to get to ask him questions. And he was an unindicted co-conspirator in Lev Parnas's case. Points it out to the world to see. This is a fucking joke if I've ever seen one. What a what a fucking scam. And all what to protect Donald Trump from what? What are you protecting Donald Trump from? The entire world knows that he's a fucking con man scumbag. Everyone knows he's a fucking criminal at this point. Why do you think... Why do you think last night 
He fucking couldn't drum up 80% of the fucking vote in Ohio. He lost 11 points from the last Republican primary where he was the sitting president to now in Florida. Folks, I keep telling you, and I know people are are fucking naysayers, but Donald Trump 100% cannot win this general election. Can't do it. He will not beat Joe Biden. The fucking math isn't there. And you can go look at the stupid fucking rigged ass polls that Steve Karnacki and the fucking media are going to sell you to make you think that it's a close race, but it's not. It's not a close race. Not only is he fucking losing, he's guaranteed to fucking lose. Guaranteed to fucking lose. And they know it. Why do you think they're trying to drum up anything they possibly can fucking drum up to see if he can win? And they're going to try to steal this motherfucker. Don't put it past them. What do you think all the, oh, Democrats can only win if they cheat? They're going to try to cheat to fucking win. They're going to try to cheat to win. And I could provide you stacks and stacks and stacks of evidence, but do I really need to provide you that for you to know that everything these fucking scumbags say is absolute projection? It's all a fucking, it's all a fucking, an admission to their crimes and their crooked ways. Every single fucking bit of it. All the way down to, to the, to the stupid idea that fucking mail-in ballots are bad. Even Donald Trump is saying in interviews now, don't go vote because we got the votes. Don't worry about voting. And the reason why is because he's hedging his bet. Everyone thinks that he's 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 telling stupid people stupid things. But Donald Trump is hedging his fucking bet here. He's hedging his bet. He's hoping, he's hoping that he'll win, which he won't. He's hoping it when he does lose, people will believe that the Democrats stole it. Because there was no Republicans who voted. There are Republicans voting in droves against him. This country hates that motherfucker's guts. I keep telling you that, and you got to stick with that fact. That is a, I don't give a fuck what you want to say, how you want to come at me. Tony, that's a broad statement, but it's a fact. This country hates that motherfucker's guts. Oh, the white Christian nationalists love him. The white Christian nationalists love him because they, they believe that Donald Trump will fucking do their bidding. So they're willing to make him king, dictator, fear her, the fentanyl fear her, that is. They're willing to, you know, give that away to that fucking dumb fuck. They're willing to do that. More than willing. So that they can round up brown people. They can round up black people. They can round up people who aren't their religion or people who just don't believe their religion quite like they do. They want to round up the LGBTQ community. They want to round up any allies for any of those people that they want to round up. And they want to fucking kill them. That's what they want to do. Because that's their only solution. I don't know if you, I don't know if you're boned up on history in the 1930s and 1940s in Europe. But Hitler came up with a great idea. Oh, it's fantastic. It was called the final solution. When they couldn't, when they couldn't fucking figure out a way how to just get rid of Jewish people in Germany, and then they had to get rid of them in Poland, and then they had to get rid of them in Russia. They just need to get rid of them all around the world. And they just, let's just round them up, put them in staging grounds, right? We'll put them in staging grounds. Let's call them concentration camps. But for this instance, we'll call it a staging ground. I don't feed them. They're animals. Animals don't need to eat. You know, throw them a bone or two every now and again. I mean, they're animals, right? I, who knows? Maybe these people aren't people. I mean, I, you're not supposed to say that. You're not supposed to take away their humanity, right? Well, let's put them in staging grounds. And then when they are starving and they're dying and their bodies are laying around and you got to fucking, and, you know, just dig a big fucking hole and just dump them in there. Just dump them in there. Well, sir, well, sir, Mr. President, Mr. Mr. President Trump, uh, the bodies are really stacking up and these people are everywhere in these staging grounds. What are we going to do? How are we going to get rid of them? I don't know. Make a big fucking oven. Cook them in an oven. Do that. How do you think this shit happens, huh? 
You think you think you think fucking Hitler was some sort of mastermind? You think he was some sort of fucking mastermind and they masterminded all this in the very beginning? They worked to that point. It is the point that that Steve Bannon, Mike Flynn, Donald Trump and Project 2025 is designed to do to get rid of you. Dissenter or anyone they don't like, for whatever fucking reason they don't like. Fuck, they'll start killing off power structure. Black Knight said it yesterday. The Nazis went after the SA first. The SA were the brown shirts. And the reason why is because Hitler and the Nazis knew that the SA were, were willing to commit violence to overthrow a government. Hell, they fucking tried to help him. Hitler went to fucking prison for it, where he wrote his goddamn book where he's a whiny little victim bitch. Sound familiar? This country really better pluck its head out of its fucking ass and realize what these people want. And realize that they're fucking serious about it. They're not playing around. They're not fucking around. And they're saying it out loud. They're telling you out loud. And they're also sending projection signs to their base. Bloodbath. Don't go vote. We got the votes. Joe Biden is Obama. Joe Biden beat Obama. Nancy Pelosi is Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley is Nancy Pelosi. The reason why he says that shit, I know everyone wants to think he's fucking got dementia or some shit. But listen, he's saying he's saying Nancy Pelosi is Nikki Haley and Nikki Haley is Nancy Pelosi because his fucking supporters want to murder and kill Nancy Pelosi, folks. So much so that one of the fucking idiots got a hammer and went to her house and tried to kill her and ended up bashing her fucking husband's head in with a hammer. Because of this fucking psychopath saying shit like, oh, uh, uh, Nancy blows in the socialist blood sucking cabal. Demonizing, dehumanizing people. This is how it fucking works, man. This is how fascism works. This is the fucking plan. This is the roadmap. They're not fucking creative. They're not, they're not going to fucking come up with some sort of inventive way to sell us fascism differently than it has been sold to societies in the past, folks. And they're not playing 4D, 5D, 27D chess. They're playing fucking checkers. This is how fascists play. And yesterday, our guest Black Knight told you, told you right to your face, and he's right. We will let fascists be fascist, right? I mean, we we people who believe in liberty are like, you know what? If you want to have your dumb, stupid fucking opinions, fine, whatever. You don't get to tell us that that's what we got to be, but that's what they want. That's what they want. They're not going to stop until we're all fascist. And if we won't be fascist, they'll fucking kill us. That's how it works. Dummy. That's how it works. And you need to start you need to start fucking saying this shit out loud to people. People are not quite fucking understanding. They just don't get it. They don't get it. They don't know what Project 2025 is. They have no clue that this is a fucking plan to upend our entire democracy and turn it into a fascist regime. They have no clue that Steve Bannon and Mike Flynn, the are or some of the architects behind the at last coup are planning the next one. And they're willing to go to prison for it. Steve Bannon said it out loud. That's right, he said it out loud. And they're so fucking desperate, so fucking desperate that they're willing to throw out rakes and jump on them for Donald Trump and make them fucking destroy their political futures so that maybe he'll win, so maybe he can pardon himself, so maybe he can kill off the people that they don't like, and they won't have to deal with them anymore. And that's right, I fucking said it. They want to kill you. They want to kill you. 
they don't want they don't want democracy. They don't want us to have arguments. They don't want us to debate each other. You fucking stupid libtards. They don't want they don't want us to argue at the ballot box where we go vote and we codify women's rights in the states and they don't ignore those laws. They want to fucking kill you, you dumb bastard. They want to kill you and your fucking family. And they'll do anything. They'll do anything to get their way because they're a bunch of pussy ass fucking bitches. Because they can't handle someone else having a different opinion than them. It makes them really, really uncomfortable and really weird inside. It's kind of like the Senate candidate in Ohio. Apparently, they're threatening to sue people who say that he's a closeted gay man. And I'm here to tell you, I don't know for sure, but that guy 100% looks like he's on a grinder app and he's been fucking giving reach arounds to some dude named Todd. Okay? Steve, Marino, Marino, Morano, whatever the fuck your name is. You're a disgrace, you vile piece of shit. Some gay man running around trying to fucking up in gay people's rights. Pointing to his beard and calling his wife a lottery ticket of 35 years? Does she know that you're fucking dudes while in your spare time while you're not fucking advocating to get rid of gay rights? Huh? You piece of trash. You piece of fucking yeah. nasty piece of trash. Oh, yeah. We got to take the fucking gloves off. Gloves off. And let me tell you something. The left is going to get really offended about shit we're going to say about this Moreno. They're going to get really mad. They're going to say words like homophobic and shit like that. Don't let that deter you. You go at them. It's enough of this fucking shit. We must defend people's rights in this country. And the freedom for these fucking assholes to think that they can get elected and take away people's rights is not liberty. It's not fucking liberty. You don't get to do that shit. Not in my fucking country. Not in my state. Not in my county. Not in the school board. Not, not, not here. Not in America, bitch. You don't get to do that. We still had the right to fucking vote. And we still had the right to select who we want in our fucking government. It's ours, bitch. So, yeah, there's going to be a lot of fucking lefties really fucking uncomfortable. But fuck them. Fuck them. Fuck them. If they if they ain't going to fucking help defend democracy, tell them. Go over there. Sit down. Take a seat. The rest of us will fight for this bitch. And then you can thank us when this is over. In 10 or 20 years, when we've defended ourselves against fascism and beat it back underneath this fucking rock with the ballot box, you can fucking thank us. Because the new brand of liberalism is in town, bitch. And it ain't going nowhere. It ain't fucking going nowhere. You ain't going to shut us up. You ain't going to shame us. Oh, we're going to cancel you. Bring it, bitch. Do it. Try it. See what happens. See what the fuck happens. Because people in this country are sick and tired of fucking MAGA running roughshod over our fucking countrymen. Telling people they can't be something or they have to be this or you can't be this or you can't dress that way. You can't love that person. You can't plan your parenthood. You can't make sure what's good for your family is your fucking family. You can't make choices. Y'all, we're going to criminalize your fucking pregnancy and definitely, 100%, we're going to take away your goddamn consent for your children. And not only are we going to fucking take away your consent, we're going to ban your privacy in doctor's offices. We're going to know exactly what you're doing, where you're doing it, when. Sounds like small government, doesn't it? Well, fuck you. You can take your fucking big fascist government and stick it up your fucking Nazi ass. Because this brand of liberalism isn't going to take that shit no more. Fuck you. We will fight for this fucking country. We will fight for the people in this country to have their fucking rights. Just like I'll fight for your rights to have your stupid fucking Nazi ideas, you dumb motherfucker. You dumb motherfucker. You have the liberty and the right to be stupid and bigoted. You do. You have the right to, to live in Ohio for 35 years, married to a woman who you think is a fucking lottery ticket while you're humping fucking dudes on the weekend and then taking away gay rights on Monday through Friday. You can go get fucked, Marino.
you can go get fucked. And I'll say it every fucking day. I don't give a fuck what kind of fucking C and D you send me. Send me a fucking cease and desist and I'll rip it up right here on air. You motherfucker. Do it. Try me, bitch. This new brand of liberalism is not going to take shit no more. Not from people who want to destroy our fucking way of life. Who want to take away what this country is built. And it ain't built on anything great. Our foundation has been built with some nasty shit. The institutional racism, the misogyny that runs wild in this country. It's 2024 for crying out loud. We can't get over this shit. It's because of a bu bunch of fucking half-assed dumb fucks like Steve Marino in Ohio. Can't fucking just admit you're gay. Just do it, man. Just live your life. We're going to let you live your life. It's all right. Fuck, you don't even have to get rid of the lottery ticket. You can still stay married to her. There ain't nothing wrong with that. Fuck, I ain't against polygamy. Whatever the fuck floats your boat, bitch. Whatever you want to do, it's your liberty. It's your right. And I'll defend it. But don't you, don't you fucking dare. Oh, don't you fucking dare act like you're going to use legislation to take away someone else's fucking rights. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. That's where I draw the fucking line. I am intolerant of intolerance. Not going to happen, bitch. Have your opinions. Go to your church and you pray and your thoughts of whatever you want to do there. But you don't get to come to our state houses. You don't get to go to our fucking capital in the U.S. and in, in Washington, D.C., the U.S. capital in Washington, D.C. And use power that the people gave you to take away their fucking rights. I'll yell and fucking scream every goddamn day to the top of my fucking lungs. And there is an army. An army of Americans who believe in fucking liberty. Oh, it's Bernie, not Steve. Why did I say Steve? <laughs> he looks like a Steve. Bernie. Oh, my God. We get to have new Bernie bros. <laughs> I don't even know his fucking name. Why, why, why do I need to know his fucking name? We need to come up with a really good nickname for him. A really offensive nickname. Offensive as fuck. I mean, really fucking offensive. So fucking offensive. So fucking offensive that it'll fucking piss the left off. <laughs> Amanda says they are Steve's. They're all Steve's. They're all fucking Steve's. Every fucking last one of these some bitches are Steve's. <laughs> uh, yes, it's Bernie. I know. I got it wrong. What do you want from me? Fuck. Oh, Tony messed up his name. Tony is right about everything else, but this. Fucking closeted gay man's name. This is who they picked. Bareback. Bareback Bernie. Brokeback Bernie. Brokeback Bernie. Billy boy, help me out here. I don't give a shit. I don't care. I don't give. I, I Listen, I've told you this once. I'm going to tell you a million times this year. I am willing to say just about fucking anything. Just about fucking anything to make sure in November we save our democracy. And I am willing to do and say just about anything to make sure people get their fucking asses off their couches, off their asses, and go fucking engage in their democracy and vote. And I will say it loudly, and I will say it proudly. And I have no bones about that. I'm here. I am here to fucking yell and scream to save democracy. And if you don't like that, hit the road, Jack. Because you're talking to the fuck em guy. And you, if you think I give two fucks about what you're offended by and what you're not offended by, well, you're barking up the wrong fucking tree. And you're messing with the wrong goddamn band of liberals. Because there's a lot of people coming to this side of the coalition that don't give a fuck anymore. They don't give a fuck. They don't care about your fucking feelings. They don't give a shit about how you want. Oh, you can't call names. You can't say, motherfucker. We do not... We do not go high when they go low. When they go low, we pull their asses way down into the fucking mud even deeper. And we fight. In the 1930s, folks in Germany didn't fight the way they should have fought. They didn't look at fucking Nazis walking down the road and mock them and shame them. But they may even just consider that ideology. Well, not no more. Not in this fucking country. Not going to happen. And I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit 
who gets offended? I mean, mainly I want the uh, Cheeto Hump and Fuck Nuggets to get offended. But if we got to piss off a few libtards in the meantime, so be it. So be it. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back right after this. We'll be right back. Mark, 60 seconds. This is the Tony Michaels Podcast. Are you ready for best pizza of life? Bring friends down to Pepperoni Hug Spot. Our chefs make pizza with heart and special touch. Cheese, pepperoni, vegetable, and more secret things. Need delivery? Pizzas come fast. Knock, knock, who's there? Pizza magic. Eat pepperoni hug spot pizza. Your tummy say thank you. Your mouth say, mmm. -hmm. Pepperoni hug spot. It's like family, but with more cheese. Catch Tony's Twitch stream, The Shit List Roundup, at twitch.tv slash the Tony Michaels. We're back to the king of brilliance. This is the Tony Michaels Podcast. Welcome back to the show. Monday through Friday, noon Eastern, 11 Central, 9 Pacific, on YouTube. The Books of Face, the Twitch Machine, X-Chan, and when I hit the button, which they've been reminding me to hit the button, Instagrammies. We're on the Instagram. We're growing rapidly. We're growing fast. We hit 35,000 on the YouTube channel today, so thank you very much. Hails to the yeah. Let's make it 350,000. Yeah, I guess I don't brag about it enough. But really, I'm not paying attention to how many people are following me on this platform or that platform. What I'm concentrated on is the fucking messaging. Yelling and screaming that messaging as loud as we fucking can. Because I'm only one microphone. You got thousands, thousands of microphones. Thousands of microphones. That's why I want you to join the new brand of liberalism here at the Tony Michaels podcast. Hit subscribe at the top of the Tony Michaels dot com. That's the Tony Michaels dot com. Hit subscribe. Hit subscribe now. Go on down to the memberships. There's free stuff you can do. We got the free griffs here. I wish we had griffs that um, you'd have to buy, you know, like a lawn juice, 5,000, um, maybe a bunion stopper, 5,000. Uh, even, even if you, uh, if you needed, uh, some sheets and pillowcases, maybe that, <laughs> uh, maybe we'll sell sheets eventually. I don't know. It could be, we might grift you on some sheets, but what about super grift gummies? We don't have those either. Son of a bitch. I ain't got, I ain't got gold shoes or trading cards. See, I'm way behind on the grifts. The best grifts I got is the discord server and that shit's free. It didn't cost you a single fucking nickel. What a fucking shitty grifter I am. <laughs> it doesn't cost you anything. Even the book club. To be a part of the book club, the membership is zero. It didn't cost you a single nickel to go be part of the book club. So go download the Discord app right now. That's right. I'm talking to you, you son of a bitch. Go download the... It, all the people who haven't downloaded that Discord app, I'm talking to you, motherfucker. Go download the Discord app. And click this goddamn button on the TonyMichaels.com. It'll take you to the fucking app to the server. And what you do is you go to the Welcome Center and click the green check mark and join the Discord server. It's free. I know a lot of you are like, oh, Tony, listen, Tony, I don't, I don't want to learn another social media. It's not social media. It's our headquarters. It's the digital antifa corporate headquarters i'm broadcasting live from the corporate antifa headquarters here in commie falls missouri where we cause all kinds of fuckery in real life but if you want to cause fuckery and you want to engage in your democracy from your fucking couch or your desk at work because i know a lot of you motherfuckers a lot of you motherfuckers out there got your earbuds in and you're making sure your fucking boss or your supervisor isn't hearing you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. And you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I hope they don't hear this so bitch saying this shit. Like, you're just hoping your fucking earbuds don't click off and your phone starts blaring my voice. You're like, oh, shit, this motherfucker. I see you. 
But the Discord server is free. Go download the app. It's free. It's join. It's free to join our Discord and get in there and fucking engage in your democracy. They'll give you all kinds of ways to do it. The best part is, is it's not social media. It's where all the people on social media meet and then go back, go back to their pla- their battlefields. We got plenty of fucking memes in there. We got all kinds of information. Uh, The Library of Democracy has information in there that you won't find anywhere else organized in a way that you can actually go get it. You want to learn how to register fucking voters? Discord server. You want to know how to fucking make memes? Discord server. You need some fucking videos and some clips to post to piss off Maglodites? You the Discord server. Go to the Discord server. I'm telling you, you're not going to find anything like it. And there isn't one out there like this. I know other creators and other content uh, people and the you know other commentators have their Discord servers, but they they don't they do all kinds of weird shit in there, and they're doing stuff like not letting you fucking say what you want to say and be who you want to be and just organically growing, you know, they want to grift you inside the Discord server. This is not that way. That's not what we're doing in there. This is like the township. Like I said, it's the digital Antifa headquarters where we meet to cause fuckery. In real life and online. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to save this bitch, even if it just takes a few of us, to put this democracy on our back and carry it across the finish line. So go download the goddamn Discord app. It's free. Get in our Discord server. It's free. Join the book club. Even if that, you know, like, what are you doing? Well, I'm joining a book club. (laughs) How have you been engaging in your democracy? Well, see, I uh, I joined a book club on some Discord server where there's, it's the island of misfit toys. <laughs> and these fucking people are nuts. It's great. They are. They're crazy in there. They know they're fucking crazy in there. Yeah, these motherfuckers, they, uh, listen, a lot of, we're doing drugs, we're drinking in there, and we're saving democracy, friends. It's the die bar of democracy. We will mock them if we have to, and in any way we have to. So that's the best grift I got for you, really. That's the best. The second best is if you go to the top of the page, you see where it says links? You go to the Kami Falls gift shop, you click store. Bam! Now you're in the Kami Falls gift shop. You got all kinds of great stuff in the Kami Falls gift shop that you can check out and buy. These uh, these. These fucking keychains have been going like crazy. I want to thank everyone for doing these orders. This really helps the laboratory out. The laboratory creates a lot of things. All those clips that you see, all the graphics, all the crazy shit, the sounds, all that stuff, it's all created in the laboratory. And these uh, fucking earrings or keychains, however you, you know, however you want to wear it, maybe even wear them as a necklace. And here, let me show you. You wear it as a necklace. You put it on and you can wear it as a necklace. And it helps it helps save democracy. So you're like doing uh, democracy a favor when you're going and getting your your fucking keychains. Uh, so and be be on the lookout. We're having some some good ideas here. Uh, we had we talked about dog dog tipa and cat tipa last week, and someone uh, texted me an idea. I was like, "Ooh, that's a good idea." Uh, so we'll have some we'll have some new ideas for dog Tifa and cat Tifa coming out of the laboratory soon. So check out the johnnymichaels.com. Click the links. Go down Discord. Discord. Get in the Discord server. And then on your way out, walk through the gift shop and see if you can find anything that you love. All right. That's enough of that shit. Enough of that shit. I want to show you Jared Moskowitz in a goddamn Putin mask. Here it is. Here's the... <laughs> Here's Jared Moskowitz walking around the Capitol in a goddamn boot mask. Let's watch. Congressman, can you explain what you're wearing? Oh, I just came to thank James Comer for taking all of our intelligence and using it in the committee. Maybe he can come see the technology in our grocery stores. Thank you. Congressman. <laughs> Go see the technology in our grocery stores. Uh, you know what's you know what's really great about this about Jared Moskowitz walking around in a fucking Putin mask is because basically what Jared Moskowitz is saying is Jared Jared Moskowitz is saying is Vladimir Putin is a congressman, but that's kind of a lie, right? It's kind of a lie. Vladimir Putin isn't a congressman. Vladimir Putin owns Congress people, and he owns the Republican GOP MAGA. Congress people. And the reason why he owns them is because he owns Donald Trump. He owns them. Hook, line, sinker. Now, 
to be fair, Tis James is trying to uh, is is trying to foreclose on the ownership of Donald Trump that Vladimir Putin has, right? Um, you know, <laughs> in this four hundred million dollar bond, he can't secure the bond. Which really, honestly, you know, a lot of people have gone with the narrative that this is a national security risk. Um, but it really is more of a risk than just national security. It's it's more of a risk about undermining our fucking um, democracy here, not really around the world. Because, you know, these fascists who want their way will pay anything to get their way. I mean, we've seen Harlan Hitler pay off the Supreme Court justices. Pay, pay, for, pay for people like Dean Phillips to act like they're running for president of the United States. That's right. Harlan Hitler funded Dean Phillips. Prove me wrong, bitch. And Steve Schmidt is a scumbag for taking Harlan Hitler money just so he can get a paycheck so that Dean Phillips can pretend to run against Joe Biden. This is all fucking, this is all fucking, this is all this guy's idea. It all comes from this guy, not Moskowitz, the, the mask, the mask that he's wearing. At the end of this clip here, a reporter says, oh, that was a good spot. How did you spot him? He has these bracelets that he wears. That's how he knew it. That's how they knew. And his height. You know, he has a certain stature. You know, people have different body types. And uh, he had the correct suit on, the correct body type, and these bracelets. And then a Putin mask. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you, 100%, I'm going to tell you 100%, my guess is, my prediction is, is that this was a Ben Mizellus idea. Now, I'm sure we'll find out about this. Um, I'm sure uh, Putin here, I mean Moskowitz, excuse me, will uh, we'll go on Midas Touch. Maybe we'll go on the, the what is it, What what's the punching one with Michael Cohen? <laughs> what's it called? Political ass kicking or some shit like that? I don't remember. I don't know what it's called. I don't know. I don't know what it's called. I don't watch that shit. Um, <laughs> and they got the boxing gloves. I think he puts on boxing gloves, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, Michael Cohen. Michael Cohen. Michael Cohen. That's it. He's in the news. Oh, yeah. He's in the news. Uh, we had to post a clip of him. Ah, sorry, my microphone. I hit it. I was, I was getting too excited about boxing. Oh, it's the beat down. Oh, it's the political beatdown. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. The political beatdown. Mm, 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 mm. All right, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> political beatdown. Yeah, right. Anywho, <laughs> my guess is that this is a Ben Mizellus idea. Full stop. That's the first thing I thought of when I saw this. And I bet we get um, an interview on whatever whatever show that Ben does over there. I don't know. Is, does Moskowitz go on legal AF or does he go on the, uh, or do they not have shows anymore? Does he not have shows anymore? Or they just do videos to, you know, have ads around. I'm not really sure. Tony's extra feisty today. <laughs> just for you. Wink. Just for you. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, I'm dead serious. I like this. I like this type of fuckery, and this is what I'm, I'm trying to promote. I'm trying to say if 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 uh, folks around the political commentary world have ideas like this and they can uh, cook ideas like this into the brains of people in Washington so that they can fight fuckery with fuckery, which is the best way to fight. I know people are like, you can't fight fire with fire. Fuck, you can't. Fuck, you don't. Um, and here's here's an example of how to make these people look like clowns. Because the, the, the thing is, is that everyone's going to be like, oh, look at Jared Moskowitz. He looks like a clown. You dumb motherfucker. Man, listen, Marjorie Taylor Greene showed up at the State of the Union looking like a fucking dildo vendor at a MAGA rally, okay? And you're fucking worried about Moskowitz mocking these people for being Putin's puppets? That's the point. It's the point to to get hold up a fucking mirror to these stupid pricks and say, look, look how much of a joke you are. You're so much of a joke that Jared Moskowitz can fucking wear a Putin mask on Capitol Hill. 
No, and, and no fucking reasonable timeline would someone who is as serious as, as Moskowitz as he is as a congressperson fucking believe that he could walk around in a goddamn Putin mask. That's the point. It's the point of fuckery. It's the point of mockery. Okay, it's the point of satire and parody, but these people are pat satire and parody of themselves. They don't even see it. So I fucking love this idea. And honestly, if we can cook more of this stuff up, this is what we should be doing. Because I know you think, oh my God, well, the thing is, is that now this is going to be all over the national news that fucking Jared Moskowitz wore a goddamn Putin mask in Congress. Yeah, get the fucking country's attention. They're not paying attention. They're not paying a fucking attention. Uh, Cynthia says that she loves the Smurfs tie. Right, the Smurfs tie is one thing. And then he wore the gold Jordans uh, at the State of the Union. But that didn't get enough attention. That's not clowning enough, right? I, I wish he was clowning enough. But and, and this is getting there. It's getting close. It's getting closer. And there's no one better to do this than Jared Moskowitz because Jared Moskowitz does a fantastic job at mocking these fucking pieces of shit. And making them truly look like the fucking nut jobs that they are. So, good on him. And again, if it is if it is Ben's idea, this was because I, I I swear to you, I I'm not kidding you. I, I know Ben. I I've, I've talked to Ben a lot. <laughs> and this this a hundred percent smells. This smells like a Ben Mizellus idea. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I wouldn't lie to you. I wouldn't shit you. You're my favorite turd. You're my favorite turd. I mean, if if this ain't a Ben, ben Mizellus idea, right? If this ain't that. If this ain't that. Then I'll box you. Boom, boom. Political ass whooping. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> All right, enough of that. Enough of that shit. Enough of that shit. Let's get to the real stuff. Let's go to um, um, Bobolinsky. Oh, Bobolinsky, their star witness. Let's hear. Let's hear Jamie Raskin. Let's hear what kind of a joke Bobolinsky is. Take it away. First, is yeah. Mr. Bobolinsky, the bitterly yeah. disappointed wannabe hunter business partner, whose famously litigious history includes unsuccessfully suing his own dying father's charity for nearly a million dollars. And just last month, suing Cassidy Hutchinson for $10 million after she reported that Mr. Bobolinsky wearing a ski mask met with Mark Meadows, which- There it is, there it is. There's the picture too. Mark Meadows right here and Bobolinsky meeting with him in a ski mask. You cannot make this shit up, folks. I swear to you, you will not make this shit up. There is no way on earth that you woke up this morning and you're like, you know what? I totally had this. I totally had this on my bingo card. Bob Alinsky, Mark Meadows, Donald Trump, and Kid Rock. Totally had this on my fucking bingo card. It was right there. I mean, I, I knew this was going to happen. No fucking way did you know this. Let's go. Ms. Hutchison is now backed up with yep. actual documentary photographic Wait. evidence, something in very short supply in this investigation. Mr. Bobolinsky made his hazy allegations against the Bidens public for the first time at a press <laughs> conference choreographed by the Trump for President campaign, which provided him a venue, a gaggle of journalists, and even a dress shirt that they went out and bought for him. <laughs> Bobolinsky! Bobolinsky didn't have a fucking dress shirt. Did they buy him gold sneakers too? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you stupid motherfuckers, man. You stupid motherfuckers. Listen, these fucking Maglodites, these Cheeto up and fuck nuggets are going to be in your comments on Facebook, on Instagram. They're going to be on fucking Twitter. They're going to be out there fucking saying, Bobolinsky, 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 Bobolinsky. They're going to be saying this stuff because it kind of rolls off the tongue, if you know what I mean. Like the big, the big Bobolinsky. Again, I bet, I bet uh, Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh write some sort of fucking some sort of gender neutral uh, <laughs> movie about Bob Walensky called the big Bob Walensky. And it's going to be total shit, but they fuck. They, they bought him a fucking dress shirt. 
They bought him a fucking dress shirt. I don't know if he didn't own one or didn't own one with fucking Big Mac stains on it. I'm not really sure what the fucking case was, but either way, keep going. Uh, to where to the event? Hours. That was kind of a Marco Rubio moment. I'm not going to lie. Jamie Raskin really should have taken a drink before he started his opening statements. Jamie, dude. Don't don't Marco Rubio this thing. Don't ruin this for us. For fuck's sake, man. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck, man? Come on, don't be don't be giving us Marco Rubio moments. God damn. All right, keep going. Later, Mr. Bobolinsky joined here we go. The second 2020 presidential debate. <laughs> look, look at Jamie Raskin. He's he he's so ready for this joke. And it's not a joke. It's real. It's this is fucking real. He's not going to make this up. I He almost wishes he could make this up. <laughs> he's he's laughing. He's laughing. Watch, watch, watch. As Donald Trump's personal guest, <laughs> where he was seated with Kid Rock and Mark Meadows. <laughs> oh fuck me the 2020 debate bob Alinsky, the guy who's got all the goods on hunter and joe biden was donald trump's personal guest i uh, let me ask i wonder if bob Alinsky got six hundred thousand dollars like the other like the fucking vodka spy I wonder if he got i wonder if bob Alinsky got six hundred thousand dollars from some fucking shady ass uh, organization in Qatar uh, for, from Donald Trump. <laughs> I wonder how much money they, they didn't just, or did Bob Alinsky just settle for a dress shirt? Is that all he did? Was just settle for a personal meeting with the uh, fentanyl Fuhrer in a dress shirt? When I bet he's pissed off. Wouldn't you think, wouldn't you think you'd be pissed off if you, if you fucking was like, oh yeah, I get to meet the guy and then I get to sit next to Kid Rock. Oh, great. This is fucking fantastic. I get to share queer beer with Kid Rock at a fucking presidential debate. They're going to buy me a dress shirt. Can you believe that? All I got to do is lie about Hunter Biden. That's all I got to do. Fuck. And then come to find out, come to find out some, some fucking Russian spy who, who apparently owns a vodka company. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, they have the same name. They picked a guy with the vodka name, the Russian vodka name. Anyways, you find out he got six hundred thousand dollars. What the fuck? You paid him six hundred grand to lie to the FBI, but you get and all I got was this fucking shitty dress shirt. Are you kidding me? It's not. Even, it's not even. It's not even fucking Perry Ellis, man. It's a goddamn Walmart dress shirt. Are you fucking shitting me? <laughs> Bob Alinsky is a fucking idiot. He's a fucking idiot. Oh my God. What the, f this is real. This is, I'm not making this shit up at all. This is fucking real. You're like, no, Tony, you're making it up. No, no, really. They bought him a dress shirt. He's probably pissed off that he got a dress shirt and the other guy got $600,000. Wouldn't you be fucking pissed? Wouldn't you be pissed? Well, I'd be pissed if this is the guy who talked me into this shit. How about this one? Who left cocaine yeah. at the White House? Oh, yeah. Who left cocaine at the White House? <laughs> They're so worried about people doing drugs at the White House. And they and they fucking, they hold up Ronnie Jackson. They put him on TV. They put Ronnie Jackson on TV. And that was the guy, the drug dealer at the goddamn White House. Apparently, he was handing out ketamine and fucking fentanyl, morphine. Anything, anything he could get his hands on. He, I'm sure, I'm sure Ronnie Jackson has done some cocaine yesterday, probably this morning already. It's probably Ronnie Jackson's deal. So spare me the bullshit about cocaine in the fucking White House. Honestly, I am all for Joe Biden doing a couple lines before he gives a speech. I know a lot of people are going to fucking be like, Jesus Christ. But I don't I really don't give a shit if Joe Biden is doing drugs before a speech. If, if it takes a couple lines of cocaine to get Joe Biden to do a speech like he did the State of Union. Fuck, man. Let's get the fucking snow mountain in here for this some bitch. And let's bury his face in, in booger sugar. And let's fucking hop this son of a bitch up to save democracy. Let's get him out there in front of the fucking microphone, stone to the bone. Let's get it going, man. Rile him up. Let's win this shit, bitch. I don't care how much cocaine it takes to fucking win for democracy. Let's do it. Let's see what else you have to say. Jim, I don't report sex crimes, Jordan. It's really funny that this guy's mad that they won't report a drug crime. 
it's really fucking weird that this is the guy who's pissed off that they won't report a drug crime in the White House. He was watching his fucking colleagues molest his fucking student athletes. Molest them. And he says nothing. He says nothing. Nothing. Jim, that's why his name is Jim. I don't report sex crimes, Jordan. And he's mad that drug crimes aren't aren't reported. Get the fuck out of here with your lies. Biden administration doesn't seem to have time to answer these questions. They're too busy investigating parents at school board meetings, <laughs> Catholic <laughs> extremists. Retaliating. Joe Biden is a Catholic, you dumb motherfucker. <laughs> Oh my God, Joe Biden, Joe Biden. Let me tell you something about Joe Biden. One of the things that frustrates me most about Joe Biden, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie about this. This is one of the things that frustrates me the most about Joe Biden, is that he goes to church way too fucking much. He goes to church way too much. I don't care if the guy golfs. I don't care if he goes to the beach. I don't want him going to no fucking church. Frankly, it's a bad look because right now in this country, if you're going into church, it's a bad fucking look. It's a bad look. <laughs> why why in the fuck are they so mad that joe biden is a catholic and he's a practicing catholic and why do they lie like this that they're demonizing catholics we're not demonizing catholics we're demonizing white christian nationalist okay white christian nationalist get it right they're nazis okay that, that's not all Catholics are Nazis, and and Nazis aren't Catholic. I don't know if you guys know that. Did you know? Did you know that the the, the right wing hates Catholics? They hate Catholics, and they hate Jews too. They hate Jews. They hate Jews. They hate Catholics. That's how it works in the right wing. That's how it works. I don't know what to tell you. Against whistleblowers, they're too busy putting together a sweetheart deal for Hunter Biden. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, a sweetheart deal. A sweetheart deal. Felonies. Felonies. That's the sweetheart deal you got. Okay. The deal that got laughed out of court. And oh, the guy who put together the deal that got laughed out of court, that's the guy they name special counsel. You wanted him to be special counsel, you fucking lying sack of shit. These pieces of trash, man. They are not about, they are not about to not lie to fucking upend our democracy. They aren't. And you should not you should not stand back and let them fucking rough shot our democracy. You should not. Fuck that. That's why we should get in this fight and we should fucking fight them and we should pull them down in the mud even more. They go low, we go lower, bitch. Oh fuck, they go low, we go lower. That's the way it should be. You know what Democrats do have time for? Yeah, let's see. Going hear after it. President Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they have grand juries that are indicting our Republican Jesus. Get the fuck out of here, man. Going after President Trump? <laughs> you lying sick of shit. Doing it for eight years. Oh, boo-hoo. Oh, my God. Boo fucking who. Wah, wah, wah. They found nothing. Grand juries found nothing. Indicted him on 91 felonies. 91 felonies. They found nothing. You really are just a special kind of fucking stupid, my friend. Actually, you know what? It isn't Jim Jordan that's a special kind of stupid. It's the people who pretend to believe this that are a special kind of stupid. Special kind of stupid. The kind of stupid that you don't want to be within spitting distance of because you just might do something you shouldn't do. Maybe end up being in a jail cell for a couple days. Then it was impeachment. Then it was raid his home. Then it was a special counsel. Then it was the 14th Amendment. <laughs> oh, by the way, the 14th Amendment. Hey, you libtards. Hey, libtards. Listen up. I told you they would fucking do this, you dumb bastards. Remember when I said, remember when I said, all the smart people out there aren't too smart about political narrative? They're not too smart about political narrative. And it showed up right here in this clip. And I've been telling you over and over and over, over and over and over. <sighs> All right. Tony, don't attack the left. We're not attacking them. We're getting them toughened up. We're getting them ready for this fight. They aren't ready. They're getting their fucking asses handed to them. These, these left-wing idiots who don't know what the hell they're doing. Uh, here's another uh, part of Raskin's opening statements. 
Um, he gave me the idea for the uh, thumbnail today. Let's go. Let's listen. With any luck, today marks the end of perhaps the most spectacular failure in the history of congressional <laughs> investigations. The effort to find a high crime or misdemeanor committed by Joe Biden and then to impeach him for it. In prior hilarious episodes of this long-running madcap series. Does, does James Comer pile have to take a shit? Is he holding in a shirt here? Look at this guy. <laughs> he looks like he's holding in a shirt, doesn't he? <laughs> I think he does. America got to see the following. One, nearly 20 fact witnesses who could not identify a single act of wrongdoing by President Biden, much less a high crime and misdemeanor, and who overwhelmingly testified that Biden was not involved in any of his family's business adventures. OK, I, I want to say something here, really, because Raskin's good at this. Um uh, Moskowitz is good at this. Da Daniel Goldman is good at this. Like they're good, right? They're good at their jobs. They're good at going in and absolutely dumping on Republicans and showing them for the lies and the frauds that they are. Like they're good at it, right? Now, but the reason why this is such great theater is because of the Republicans, really. Honestly, if they did this in a different way, if they weren't doing this in the MAGA way and the Trump way, they would actually have an easier time with this. It would actually be sticking more. It would be stickier, right? It would be stickier if they had if they had a better way of doing this. But they always got to, you know, bring in the clown car and have all the clowns get out and fucking run around setting themselves on fire, jumping on rakes and shit. OK, uh, and it's the reason why it appears that this is so interesting. Congressional hearings, folks, congressional hearings are not supposed to be a form of entertainment, okay? They're not entertainment. That's not what this is. It's, it's government. It's fucking boring. It's, it's a fucking long, hard slog. It's a lot of legal stuff. It's a lot of questioning witnesses about shit that just is not interesting in the slightest, okay? It's, it's fact gathering, you know what I mean? And it's, you gather data, Right. You got to sit and listen to a bunch of fucking academic experts talk about that. day. It's fucking boring as shit. This is what government is supposed to be fucking boring. Right. That is why we have a lot of smart, boring people to go represent us. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm not opposed to politicians being boring and dry. I want them to be good at their fucking jobs. Right. Setting policy, coming up with policy that makes sense for their constituents and America as a whole. Like that's what we want. And we want them to defend our fucking rights. OK. We want them to defend the fucking Constitution. And a lot of times that shit looks boring. And a lot of times and it's supposed to be fucking just fucking a long, hard, boring slog. Like, oh, my God, who wants to watch C-SPAN? It's the reason why they can't sell beer commercials on C-SPAN, because no one wants to watch that shit. It's the reason why the government has to fund C-SPAN, because no one wants to watch that shit. It is not supposed to be interesting like this. It is MAGA. It is Trump. It is the Republicans that has turned this our fucking government into a goddamn circus. And the circus is fun to watch. It is. It's fucking hilarious. It's great to watch. I honestly don't know what I'm doing by trying to put myself out of business now that I'm just now thinking about it. Because what I'm doing is I'm advocating for government to be fucking boring again. It makes my job harder. Honestly, how am I going to keep people entertained and fucking all hyped up about boring ass government when they're interviewing someone about how how much water we should have in toilets when they flush, you know, and how is the flushing of those toilets going to affect, you know, the budget, the federal fucking budget. It's fucking it's fucking boring shit. <laughs> Vixen says you'll find a way. I probably will, but it's it's supposed to be boring, folks. This is not supposed to be a goddamn a fucking sitcom. Two, three expert witnesses called by the majority itself who said nothing that they had seen in 
the tens of thousands of pages of documents uh, adduced by the majority even remotely approach the level of a high crime and misdemeanor. Bank records would show exactly what all the witnesses told us, that Joe Biden was not involved <laughs> in his family members' businesses. We got evidence! We got evidence! What evidence you got? Well, it ain't actually evidence, but we say it's evidence. Okay, all right, keep going. Repeated wireistic displays of pornographic images by the majority. I'm not against this, by the way. I'm not against this. I know a lot of people are against this. I'm not against, I'm not against a big old, you know, some fucking porn being shown in congressional hearing. Honestly, it's kind of funny that, that, that the crowd that's like, born, ban porn, ban porn, it's bad for people. And then they're holding up fucking pictures of Hunter Biden's cock. Like, look, here's a big old dick. Look how big this dick is. Oh my God, I love this dick. Dick, the dick, the dick, dick, dick. <laughs> they can't help themselves. I like that part. I like that part. Keep going. Jordy, completely irrelevant to any conceivable legislative or investigative purpose. A star witness, Gal Luft, who turned out to be a Chinese agent and an illegal arms trafficker on the run from American justice. <laughs> oh and the key piece of evidence, yeah. which launched the entire zany e goose chase, mm -hmm. an FD 1023 form yeah. in which the FBI duly recorded a completely fictional tip about a $5 million bribe to Vice President Biden peddled by Alex Smirnoff, who has been criminally indicted by a Trump-appointed U.S. attorney, Special Counsel David Weiss, for felony counts of systematically lying to the FBI and constructing a false record about Joe Biden and now sits in jail in California as a flight risk while the world studies his long-standing and extensive ties to Russian intelligence. <laughs> Where he was paid $600,000 $600, from some Trump businessman to do all this. It's fucking insane, man. It is not supposed to be this interesting. We are not supposed to have a script for the fucking movie, the big, <laughs> what is it, Bobolinsky? The big Bobolinsky. I swear to God, if we do a movie, if there is a movie made about this shit, about this Hunter Biden stuff, and it is not called the Big Bobolinsky. They are fucking doing a disservice to this country. And I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, I will call for a fucking union strike again in Hollywood if they do not fucking make sure that this goddamn film that they make about Hunter Biden's dick and his laptop, that fucking movie ain't called the Big Bobolinsky. If they don't, it is a fucking, that should be a, we should fucking, right now, we should be electing politicians to make sure that if they don't fucking name that movie, The Big Bobolinsky, it's a crime. And we should have start arresting people and lock them up. Lock them up. Lock them up. If they don't know that that's the best fucking name for that film, lock them up. The dude abides. <laughs> Keep going. Today, the good chairman and his ace mega detectives have finally jumped the shark. The oh, comedy of fuck. errors comes crashing to an end. Is it does come crashing to an end. And let me show you the witness that just absolutely tears apart their entire fucking narrative. Tears apart their narrative so much, he does it in 12 fucking seconds. 12 fucking seconds. Let's listen to Lev Parnas. Honestly, when I was arrested, my original indictment linked me to an individual referred to as unindicted co-conspirator one. We now know this individual to be Congressman Pete Sessions, who sits on this very committee today. <laughs> That's right. You heard it right from Lev Parnas under oath in the Hunter Biden cock committee that Pete Sessions was unindicted co-conspirator number one on his case, where Lev Parnas was indicted as associate of Rudy Giuliani. And we're supposed to believe that this country is weaponizing its DOJ to go after Donald Trump and go after Republicans when all they do is pick out the person who will take the fall for them and throw them in front of the fucking bus like they would Lev Parnas. Now, I'm not saying Lev Parnas didn't deserve to go to prison. Apparently, a fucking judge did. He pled guilty. He went to prison. And Lev Parnas has to live with that record for the rest of his life. Trust me, I know. 
But let Parnas here is saying shit right out loud under oath in a committee about the committee people that are fucking sitting on the committee questioning rather these fucking people are goddamn international criminals. And let Parnas is saying, hey, when I went overseas to try to fucking trump up some fucking bullshit, no pun intended, about fucking Hunter Biden and Joe Biden so that Donald Trump could win the election at the behest of Rudy Giuliani, his personal attorney and confidant. And personal fucking fluffer. Oh, yeah. Rudy Giuliani has totally fucking sucked Donald Trump's dick. 100%. You can't. I, I almost bet. I almost bet money that fucking Rudy Giuliani has went down to Mar-a-Lago, went into the. Oh, <coughs> <coughs> probably went into the, <coughs> the fucking makeup room <coughs> where he does his hair and his fucking makeup. <coughs> and I bet fucking Rudy Giuliani left with fucking Cheeto dust on his sex swing. I'm just saying. And, and you know, I mean, he needed I need money. He needs money, too. Donald Trump ain't got no money, but Rudy needs money, too. But let Parnas totally tears his shit apart in 12 seconds. Listen to it one more time. 12 seconds, he rips this whole fucking thing to the ground. Ironically, when I was arrested, my original indictment linked me to an individual referred to as unindicted co-conspirator one. We now know this individual to be Congressman Pete Sessions, who sits on this very committee today. If this was any normal fucking timeline, any normal timeline where government was boring and we elected people where they disagreed about issues and we unelect them and reelect them to make sure they get the issues just right. We elect this president. We elect that. If it was all the normal boring timeline, Pete Sessions would be out in front of cameras this afternoon resigning his seat in Congress. Donald Trump would be dropping out of the fucking race. Jim Jordan and James Comer Pyle would be would be stepping down from their chairmanships, considering rather they were going to resign from Congress. And they're not. They're not. Is it Regina asked, is this from today? <laughs> fucking ain't right. It's from today. This is the first time Lev Parnas has been able to fucking actually testify in open public in front of Congress under oath. The Republicans don't want him there. And the reason why is because he says shit like this. Ironically, when I was arrested, my original indictment linked me to an individual referred to as unindicted co-conspirator one. We now know this individual to be Congressman Pete Sessions, who sits on this very committee today. I've talked to Lev Parnas in public, in Twitter spaces, and I've also messaged Lev Parnas in private about some of these very fucking issues. And Lev Parnas, not only does he claim about the... Uh, his his indictments, but he also claims that they went overseas to fucking drum up lies. Honorable members of Congress, Chairman Comer, Ranking Member Raskin, and members of the Oversight Committee, I am humbled and thankful before you to, to show up before you today. I came to the United States from Odessa, Ukraine in 1976 when it was still the so former Soviet Union. My mother and father and sister and I had left the Soviet Union, escaping anti-Semitism and persecution. While in Rome and right en route to Israel, my sister and I won the most important opportunity that we have ever been given. We won a U.S. green card lottery. My family came here with literally no more than shirts on our back and the hopes of rebuilding our lives in the land of freedom. I say this to you because I love this country. From shortly after my arrest on October 9, 2019 to now, I have been trying to share the irrefutable truth with you. The American people have been lied to by Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani, and various cohorts of individuals in government and media positions. They created falsehoods to serve their own interests, knowing it would undermine the strength of our nation. From November 2018 to October 2019, I was a key participant and a witness to numerous efforts to prove that Joe and Hunter Biden were linked to corruption in Ukraine. Rudy Giuliani, on behalf of then President Donald Trump, tasked me with a mission to travel the globe, finding dirt on the Bidens so that an array of networks could spread misinformation about them, thus securing the 2020 election for Donald J. Trump. And there it is. There's your election interference. There's your fucking election interference, folks. Rudy Giuliani and Lev Parnes were, were, were tasked by Donald Trump to go around the globe and drum up a bunch of fucking lies about his opponent so that way he could beat him in 2020. Election interference. 
it ain't election interference when Donald Trump creates or creates fucking phony ass numbers so that he can get out of paying taxes to the fucking taxpayers of the state of New York, defrauding the people of the state of New York, not giving them money. And now all that money he fucking stole, he has none of that money. It, it, he still doesn't have any of that fucking money. That he stole. And the reason why is because Donald Trump isn't actually a fucking billionaire. Donald Trump isn't actually smart. Donald Trump isn't fucking intelligent. Donald Trump doesn't have many thoughts that go past his fucking nose. And they all, every last one of them, benefit him. All of them benefit him and him only. And at the end of the day, he 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 leaves a bloodbath in his wake, like Lev Parnas here. Look, I'm not saying Lev Parnas is a good dude. Everyone wants to fucking hold these people up as heroes. I don't think Lev is a hero here. I think Lev seeks the truth. I think Lev Parnas come to a point in his life and he's like, you know what? Why lie about it anymore? What the fuck am I lying about? This son of a bitch hung me out to fucking dry. So Leb Parnas, because he has a few brain cells to rub together to realize that he was being fucking duped by these pieces of shit and used as a cog in their little fucking criminal wheel. And as soon as that cog got weak, throw that cog out. We'll get a new one. When he realized that, so he, he seeks the truth. Does that make him a hero? I, I don't know. I guess that's up for folks to decide. Rather, Leb Parnas is a hero. I've talked to Leb. I've, I've, I've had conversations with him. I've messaged him in private. I think he's genuine about his seeking of the truth. There are some, uh, there are some former Trump allies that aren't exactly seekers of truth. They're more seekers for personal retribution, if you know who I'm talking about. But this guy doesn't seem to have any personal retribution in his bones. He just wants the fucking people to know the truth. The guy served his time. He did his crime. He served his time. And now he wants people to know what the fuck happened. And why it is so detrimental to our country that these people are trying to fucking just absolutely fucking grift and dupe the rest of this country. So does that make him a euro? I don't know. It's up for you to decide, and really history to decide, whether Lev Parnas is, is a hero here or not. But there's one goddamn thing about Lev Parnas that I can say. Is this guy doesn't give a shit what it leads to or how it leads. He's not willing to go away from the shit that he knows is the truth. I've been in spaces where he had the opportunity to absolutely smear Rudy Giuliani. Absolutely had the ability to smear Donald Trump. And he wouldn't do it. To the extent that Lev Parnas wouldn't just tell a lie just to tell a lie just to fucking for sensation. Because that's what got him in the fucking hot seat in the first place. Was looking for misinformation to make it look like something was that it wasn't. So does that make Lev a hero here? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Again, we'll know in due time. We'll find out if this stuff is going to actually make a huge difference. There's one thing for sure, though. The Republicans are not going to stop this shit. They're not going to stop fucking throwing out these bear traps to jump into. Because they like the rakes, right? They like the step on the rakes. They like that. But boy, boy, do they like, like just fucking leg-eating bear traps. You know what I'm talking about? The ones that just don't fucking capture you. The ones that fucking gnaw into your bone. Right? There's bear traps and then the spring on some bear traps will just clamp down on your fucking leg and just dig in all the way down to the marrow. You know what I'm saying? And the more you move, oh my God, the worse it gets. Fuck, you just may lose a leg, a limb over that style bear trap. Those are the ones that the Republicans like the best. And they like to jump in with both legs, not just one. They like to jump in with both legs. And I can't tell you how happy I am that they would do this type of stuff. Because you think you think that this stuff is bad for our republic. It's bad for our democracy. And really, when we get to a point that we have hindsight, what we're going to do is thank Donald Trump 
and thank MAGA Republicans for being so fucking dumb. It's a fucking godsend to our democracy that these people are so fucking stupid. They're so fucking selfish. They're so fucking deluded. They're so confident in their harebrained ideas. They don't have enough brain cells to rub together to see what could possibly happen if they do this thing today. What will it turn out to be like tomorrow? Right? Republicans used to play the long game. They really did. Mitch McConnell is a long game Republican. It's the reason why Mitch McConnell gets so frustrated with MAGA. Is because MAGA says the quiet part out loud, which destroys the long game. It completely destroys it. It completely destroys the illusion of conservatism. They're like, no, that just looks like a bunch of Nazis. Where Mitch McConnell and Liz Cheney and Mitt Romney, yeah, I said their names, those fucking scumbags, the Bush family, Dick Cheney, they like to, Ronald Reagan, they like to dress up. Nazism. They like to dress up fascism as conservatism, thin veil it a little bit, you know, so they can sell it to the American people a little easier. You know, keep the quiet part quiet. That way, in the long run, you get what you want. It may take a little longer to get those Supreme Court justices to make sure to strip away women's rights, you know, and ban pregnancies and make embryos babies. Make sure you can't marry who you want to marry. Fuck those gay people, right? And make sure that you can't be who you want to be. Make sure you can't watch the stuff you want to watch. You can't watch porn. You can't play video games. You can't watch certain movies. Hell, you can't sing certain songs anymore. You don't think that's where it's going? Fucking just hide and watch. Hide and fucking watch. They played the long game. They did. They do not anymore. They don't play the long game. They say quiet parts right out fucking loud. For everyone to hear. And they they don't care if you hear or not. They want you to see that they're Nazis. This is what they want. And they come up with these harebrained schemes. That always seem to bite them in the ass. Before they can even fucking finish explaining the harebrained scheme to you. And the reason why is because they're not playing long game politics anymore. And the main reason why is because they're doing this all. All they're spending all this political capital on one stupid fat bastard. One stupid fat bastard they're spending all this political capital on. Every last fucking nickel of it. Not just the political capital. They're actually spending their actual capital. Like They they fucking gave all their money in the RNC to Donald Trump. He's going to absolutely rob the Senate campaign fund. They're going to he's going to fucking fleece the goddamn congressional campaign fund. He's going to go to the state parties and steal their fucking money too. I bet he goes to the county the county the county parties in these states and he steals their fucking money. Give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. And good on him. And good on them. I can't tell you how excited I am that Republicans are no longer playing the long game. The only thing that concerns me is this country is still lulled to sleep by them and lulled to sleep by their ideas. And it's going to take a bit to shake it loose and wake them up and really pluck their heads out of their asses to realize what the fuck these Nazis want and where they're going with this. I mean, here's another prime example. I'll show you this fucking clip here of RFK Jr. How fucking irrelevant is he? After after admitting on Fox News on Jesse Waters' program that, yes, I like Jeffrey Epstein. And my wife had a thing with Justine Maxwell. He said that. He said, my wife had a thing with her. They were fucking? Is that what? I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, usually, usually, I mean, in social settings, if you're like, oh, they got a thing. They got a thing like they're doing something, you know, they're jerking each other off. They're playing with each other, smooching. They're probably fucking. I think that's what he meant. They got a thing. What does that mean? A thing? What? what, what? No, not Cheryl Hines. The wife, his wife, Mary, the one that committed suicide. The one that committed that Epstein did herself. I don't know. Maybe, maybe she was, maybe she had a thing 
with Maxwell. I don't know what to tell you. That's what he said. But listen to this little back and forth here with Casey Hunt. And this is the stupid fucking MAGA thing. Because RFK Jr. is not a Democrat. Okay? He's MAGA. He might have been a Democrat at one point, and he might have been a big fucking pusher of climate change and a climate change activist and all this shit, but he doesn't do that shit anymore. He had to sell out to MAGA. And the reason why I think RFK Jr. had to sell out to MAGA, and he's got a lot of money. He's got Kennedy money. He's got the Kennedy name. So this might be defamation, but I don't give a fuck. Sue me, bitch. I think the reason why, the reason why RFK Jr. is doing what he's doing is because Steve Bannon has Epstein tapes of RFK Jr. He's got the evidence on RFK Jr. And RFK Jr. is terrified that Epstein tapes will come out of him. There's somewhere, something that he did with Jeffrey Epstein or his wife did with their thing with Justine Maxwell, something like that. And they got fucking, they got blackmail on this motherfucker. I think that's what it is. Because he says wild and crazy shit about vaccines. Wild and crazy fucking shit. Just bonkers ass shit. And it's it's MAGA shit. It's MAGA shit to attract MAGA. And I really think that Steve Bannon believed that there was a section of America that were moderates and independents that would buy this anti-vaccine shit from RFK and he would peel away votes from Biden. And he's wrong. He's wrong because America doesn't think like this fucking dumb fucking tweed. And Casey Hunt, and Casey Hunt's okay. She's good. She's pretty good. She's all right. Casey Hunt's been doing this for a while. She used to be on MSNBC a lot. Now she's on CNN Max, I guess. She's not even on CNN. She's just on CNN Max or something. Anyways, the point is, is that Casey Hunt absolutely fucking owns his ass here. Watch this. You have gained notoriety for your skepticism about vaccines. And over the summer in an interview, you said, quote, there's no vaccine that is, you know, safe and effective. Do you still believe that? I never said that. So stop. I never said that. I never said that. I never said that. I say a lot of things. I mean, I don't really say them. I more mumble them. (laughs) But I didn't say that. Oh, you didn't say that? All right, let's see what Casey does here. Look at her pointing at him. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Look at her here. Shut the fuck up, motherfucker. Watch this. Stop me. We have the clip. Uh, Please play the clip. I just uh, talked about that the media slanders you by calling you an anti-vaxxer. And uh, you've said that you're not anti-vaccine. You're pro-safe vaccine. Difficult question. Can you name any vaccines that you think are good? Uh, uh, can I name any vaccines that I think are good? Uh, go ahead. Um, I think some of the live virus vaccines are probably uh, so, so averting more problems than they're causing. Um, there's no vaccine that is, you know, safe and effective. Well, I don't- yeah, there is no vaccine that is safe and effective. <laughs> There are some vaccines that are doing more good than harm. (laughs) What in the actual fuck? So Casey Hunt absolutely owns his ass. Listen, if you need any other reason to to know that this guy is fucking irrelevant, and really any any American that put their fucking vote for this guy, for this fucking this fucking blackmail little bitch, because that's what he is. They're whole, they're doing blackmail against him. It's blackmail. It's the same kind of shit they did to Lindsey Graham. It's the same kind of shit they do to Tim Scott. It's the same kind of shit they did to Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio. It's the same kind of shit that they did with uh, Bernie uh, Mar- Marino in Ohio, and it's the same shit they're going to do. It's the same shit that Putin does with fucking Ron Johnson. There is definitely a tape of Ron Johnson in Russia fucking, uh, fucking underage girls in a goddamn Russian hotel room. Definitely that fucking shit exists. And there are P-tapes, and there's worse than P-tapes. It's the reason why Donald Trump does what he does. Compromise. Every last one of these son of a bitches have compromise on them. And if they would just get over it and realize that we don't give a fuck about them or their compromise, and just go away, just go away, just go away. Ron Johnson, you can just resign and just live out your fucking life. Fucking Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio and all you fucking scumbags, Lindsey Graham, Tim Scott, just go fucking retire. Just go retire. 
but they can't because they'll use the blackmail against them. <laughs> I listen, I I believe that anything that they tell me to believe, uh, because they got tapes of me uh, with Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> I'm saying is that none of the 72 vaccines has ever been tested in a safety study. Okay. pre license So let me ask you if you think it's wise for people to take these uh, vaccines, because you had this to say um, on a different podcast about whether uh, people with young babies should be getting them shots. Watch. I love I love how she's like, look, on another podcast. You notice this guy like <laughs> and I'm not knocking on podcasts because I got a podcast. You got a podcast? Ted Cruz got a podcast. Subscribe now. He's got a podcast. He got a podcast. Ooh, he's got a podcast. Podcast, podcast, podcast. But you notice how this fucking shitbox only appears on podcast? And he only appears on these right-wing podcasts. And that's the one thing that these fucking boneheads do that I was pointing out earlier, is they always jump in the bear traps. They never play the long game. Like, Steve Bannon is not playing long game politics, folks. He is not playing long game politics at all he's not measuring his words he's not making sure the quiet part stays quiet he's saying it right out loud he's telling us we're going to take over the government we're going to fire the government we're going to totally destroy the administrative state and we're going to do it illegally we're going to commit crime because you got to be willing to go to prison to do it that's what he's saying steve bannon is saying out loud we are going to commit felonies to make this a fascist republic bloodbath I'm willing to go to prison for it. I'm willing to commit crime to do this. That's what Steve Bannon is saying out fucking loud. And this guy is Steve Bannon's little plan. While Steve Bannon didn't think past his fucking little scabbed up nose, his Rudolph drunk ass scabbed up nose, to, to think what's going to happen if we put this guy as an anti-vaxxer in the race? And go on all these MAGA podcasts and get, get, garner up all this support. Folks, the only people dumb enough to vote for this fucking tweed are people who were going to be dumb enough to vote for Donald Trump. Okay? That's what's going to happen. I know. I know. You think that's not the truth, but that is absolutely 100% the truth that almost every single vote that RFK, whatever party he runs on, whatever ballots he gets to be able to be a peer on or whoever writes his name in, the people who are going to vote for this guy were going to vote for Donald Trump. Because if they're dumb enough to vote for this guy, they are fucking dumb enough to vote for Trump. Doubt me on that shit. Do not be afraid of these fucking idiots. It is enough of being afraid. Don't be afraid. Fucking welcome these fucking dummies in the fight. And let them round up a bunch of flat earth believing, Donald Trump loving, fucking Cheeto humping fuck nuggets and let them vote for him and peel off votes in important states that will that will only ultimately give Biden the electoral win. Good on him. Let's go with the evidence, though. For many, many years, uh, I think parents were so gaslighted and they were scapegoated and they were uh, vilified and marginalized so that even children, parents of kids who were very, very badly injured knew what happened to their kid, but they were just reluctant to talk about it. Hey, he's reluctant to talk about it. This is the same old shit that, all, that vaccines cause autism, but they're going one step further. They're going one step further. They're saying that these people, these these children are, are physically fucking harmed from these vaccines, which is so far from the truth. Do you know what polio does to a child? Do you know? Do you know what measles? Do you know what the chicken pox can actually do to a child? Do you know if it's a severe enough case? When my when my son was little, they wanted to give him the chicken pox vaccine and i was like what the chicken pox vaccine chicken pox why would they why would you give him a chicken pox vaccine that's what i thought i thought what the f i did i had chicken pox right and then i did just a little bit of searching just a little bit and realized that there's a really low chance that a child can receive a severe case of chicken pox. But if your child receives a severe chase, case of chicken pox, it's not nothing to fuck with. It can kill children. 
Okay. And the vaccine was made to make sure not to let fucking chicken pox harm children. Okay. And keep parents, children safe. And we all but eradicated disease in this country by making sure that children receive vaccines. Made sure of it. Polio is one of them. The measles. And they're all making a comeback, baby. And they're making a comeback in these states where these fucking boneheads like RFK are making ground on fucking bonehead fucking junk ass science. Junk ass science. We have decades and decades and decades and decades of fucking data that show that these vaccines, especially these childhood vaccines, fucking work. And they work by making sure that these diseases do not enter our societies and our communities, especially for the people who cannot receive vaccine. Because there's some people out there with immune disorders that cannot receive them. And chicken, not only will the vaccines kill them, but chicken pox will kill them fucking dead. Measles will kill them fucking dead. Fucking smallpox, dead. All of them, dead. And Donald Trump is now standing on stage trying to gather up the RFK Jr. votes back. That's why when Donald Trump stands on stage and says, I'm going to make sure I will defund any school that requires vaccines as a mandate for the school. I will defund them. They won't get a penny, not a penny of my money, even though he doesn't even have a penny. And he doesn't understand that that's not how federal funding works. But that's what Project 2025 wants to do. Project 2025 wants to absolutely strip all federal funding from schools. Not just certain ones, all of them. And Donald Trump stands on stage and lies to his supporters and lies to the RFK guys. You know, the RFK bros, they're like, oh, he can lift weights. He's so cool, man. He's such a tough guy. He gets all the vaccine, but he tells everyone else not to get him. He's so tough. All those fucking idiots, he's trying to court back their votes. And what those fucking boneheads don't realize in Project 2025, Project 2025 lays out that they're they're absolutely going to get rid of f- federal funding for education. All of it. All of it. And the reason why is because they want the states to have control over the education money so they can give it to white Christian nationalists. They're already doing it in Tennessee. They're doing it in Missouri. That would be We've awesome. Been o- We've been over this time and time and time again. They don't want public schools. They want church schools. They want your children to have a choice. Either go to a church school or don't go to school at all. That's what they want. They want to either indoctrinate your children or you don't have your children don't get an education. That's what they want. And that's what the entirety of the stupid fucking anti-vax thing is that's all of it and the reason why is because of the education component in fascism mind you when these motherfuckers if they win if we don't do our job and defend our democracy like we're going to and we're going to win it's guaranteed i know But in the hypothetical situation where Donald Trump would win and Steve Bannon would take over this country and implement Project 2025 and absolutely undo our entire fucking democracy from the top to the bottom, you can damn well better bet, damn well better bet that as soon as they get the chance, they're going to vaccinate every single fucking child in those Christian schools. They'll give them the best fucking health care. They're white ones, the white ones. The white Christian nationalists will get the best fucking health care. They'll get the fucking vaccines because they're not going to want their their pure white race to be fucked with. You know, they don't want them walking around with polio and measles and smallpox. They're going to make sure they're going to make sure to make embryos babies. So that way they control women's uteruses. And they're going to act upend all fucking health care in this country. And they're going to control it. They're going to control it from the federal level with laws. They're going to pass laws, not, 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 not democratically, of course. By laws, it's going to be Donald Trump signing. Like, I won't, I won't fund any school 
that that mandates vaccines, not public ones. Oh, we're going to have the white Christian nationalist ones. The ones that teach them how to be good Nazis. Oh, they'll have the best vaccines ever. The most available. It'll be warp speed. It'll be fantastic. That would be awesome. They're going to make sure they have women's clinics in this country. Oh, yes. They'll have women's clinics. There'll be two types of women's clinics in this country. There'll be one women's clinic that makes sure that they get to decide who and when that woman gets pregnant and what kind of white baby she's having. That's right. They're not going to want anything but white babies in this country born. Blonde hair, blue eyes, look like me. That's what they're going to want. So there'll be a women's clinic where they do plenty of fucking abortions, folks. And it ain't, and it'll be a bloodbath. It'll be a slaughterhouse. They ain't going to give a shit about the woman. They're just going to make sure that that black woman or that white woman doesn't have anything but a blonde haired blue eyed baby. And there'll be another women's clinic. There'll be another women's clinic. It'll be for the white Christian nationalist. That clinic will be designed for just them. They'll get the best health care there. They'll have the best fucking science. They'll have the most available for them. I mean, as long as they bow down to the Fuhrer, as long as they, you know, are loyal to the regime, right? This is the fascist future that these people want. They don't want black people to be pilots, motherfuckers. Charlie Kirk, Steve Bannon, and the right wing is saying they don't want black people to be pilots. You, th you think I'm crazy to say that they're only going to have health care for white people? You people are wild, man. You're wild and crazy. You're not listening. You're not paying attention to what these motherfuckers are saying. I mean, here, fucking listen to this asshole. Here's Matt Gatz. Down at Mar-a-Lago. Listen to what he says about Mar-a-Lago. Listen to what they listen to what he says. But in a lot of ways, Mar-a-Lago is the, the touchstone. It is the bedrock of the America First populist movement. And more and more people are seeing that each and every day. Mar-a-Lago is the touchstone, the bedrock of the America First MAGA movement. Folks, they're not just they're not just signaling that they're going that they're going to up in Washington, D.C. and our federal government. They're saying they're going to bulldoze the White House and they're going to make Mar-a-Lago the palace for the king. You need to fucking listen and you need to listen good. They're signaling it. They're saying it right the fuck out loud. Now, my hope is. When they finally do seize. When they finally do seize. Mar-a-Lago. That they bulldoze that motherfucker. Just, I don't give a shit the historic value at this point. I don't give a shit. A lot of people are going to make that argument. Oh, it's a historic building and blah, blah, blah. Yakety, sh fucking schmackety. Bulldoze that motherfucker. You know what? Don't do that. Fucking strap some dynamite to that bitch. Oh, make it a show. Fuck yeah. Sell it on sell the tickets to watch it on pay-per-view. That's what you should do. It's enough of this bullshit. It's enough of this fascist theocracy, this theocratic monarchy, and they want kings and all this shit. They're coming after you, you stupid bastard. Realize it. Understand it. They're saying it out loud. Hey, I'm a big fan of the concept of the royal family and the royal family. Now, I'm, I'm a big fan of the concept of the royal family and the royal family. Now, I'm, I'm a big fan of the concept of the royal family and the royal family. Now I'm a big fan of being royalty. Matt Gatz saying it's the touchstone, the foundation of the America First MAGA movement. It's here where it was born. That would be awesome. This, this is the birthplace. This is where it resides. We will make this, we will make this the palace for the king. Don't make me go back and play the theocratic monarchy, fucking. I'm going to come. 
clip where they want a theocratic monarchy. Don't make me go play it. I will. And they're willing to say and do just about anything to push these ideas. Anything. So much so to make fools of themselves. Speaking of Charlie Kirk, here's Charlie Kirk, the guy who doesn't want black people to pilot planes. I'm not kidding you. They don't want black people to pilot planes. He's a racist piece of shit. Listen to what he says about a civil war here. This is funny. Talk about this upcoming election, how important this is, how critical this is, and what the... Ah, oh, Jesus. The fucking volume on this thing, man. Listen, there are some accounts that need to turn up their volume when they post shit. Here's a problem I got, all right? Is I see these clips. I go search these clips out there and find these clips for you to show you you know, give you context of what the uh, overall messaging is. Because messaging is messaging. Like, I wouldn't have to show you these clips. I could just, like, quote them and read them and that sort of thing. It's more effective, though, if you see the video or you see pictures. Like, it's more effective to get the messaging across for you guys to really, you know, get get strategically outraged and get pissed and go talk about it, right? And carry that messaging with you and have something that you can see and that, that you saw evidence, right? Like your own eyes. I saw it with my own eyes. It wasn't just Tony read it to me. I saw it with my own eyes. Like that sort of shit. Uh, but here's the thing is I use Twitter as my as a tool so I can find these clips and show them to you on the show. It's really easy. It's fast. It's easy. It's efficient. But we have the volume problem. Now, I got this motherfucker turned all the way up. I got it turned all the way up. And not only that, I've got it under a booster for 600%, all right? So there's 100% of the actual volume that is posted on the actual website. And then I got to turn up to 600%. What some creators do and what some people do with their Twitter account is they turn down the volume on the clip because they don't want someone to scroll past it because it's too loud. Well, turn it up. Turn that shit, turn that shit up. Yell and scream like Tony does. Don't be scared to fucking have a clip guard, okay? <laughs> All right, let's see if we can hear this. Let me bang it up. And really, it's not important what this fucking weirdo that uh, is sitting here with Charlie says. It's important what Charlie says. So let's listen. You're doing to make a difference. So, well, you know, so that this doesn't happen again. We gotta, we gotta do something. I, I love the question. And so I'm gonna start unusually. I, I wanna make sure that we all make a commitment that if this election doesn't go our way, the next day we fight. Uh, okay, so he says, if this election doesn't go our way, the next day we fight. It's almost like a bloodbath. Bloodbath. It's almost like Charlie Kirk is saying he wants a bloodbath. Because Charlie Kirk says, if this election doesn't go our way. So he's saying, if they don't vote the way we want to vote, there's going to be trouble. It's going to be a bloodbath. This is the exact narrative that everyone was saying that was the context from Donald Trump. And, of course, it's all the fucking Charlie Kirk simps, all the Daily Wire simps. It's all the fucking Elon Musk simps. Like, You're taking it out of context. Well, here's your fucking context right here. Here's, here's a guy saying, if it doesn't go our way, if we lose, we are going to be little fucking pussy-ass bitches, and we're going to try to fight. Now... I think this is hilarious because nothing would please me more than to show up at the Civil War and this is the guy in the front. <laughs> nothing. Dude, I'm, I'm showing up for that Civil War. I don't give a fuck what you say. I don't care what kind of guns they got. I don't care what kind of strategy they got. I don't care. I don't give a shit. I'm showing up to the Civil War where this guy is at the, on their team and he's in the front. Oh, I'm going to that fucking civil war. Fuck <laughs> yeah. I hope Tim Pool's there too. Everything's a civil war to Tim Pool. Like there's a bad meme on online. Like, civil war, civil war. Oh, the fucking fam made a meme. Civil war. That kind of shit. You know what I mean? But let me tell you something. If Charlie Kirk and Tim Pool are at the civil war, <laughs> I'm showing up to that motherfucker, man. And I won't be out front too, bitch. Oh my God. I can't wait. And I hope it's like, I hope it's like the old days where we just get in like a fucking field, you know, and they got all their fucking fat fucking meal team six motherfuckers over there who can't run, who can't walk. 
can't breathe. They eat four Big Macs for breakfast, and Charlie Kirk and Tim Pool and Ben Shapiro are out front, and Steve Bannon, they're all out front as they're, and Jack Prostate, those guys are out front as their fucking generals. Doyle rules. Oh, man, I love that. I'm showing up to that. I'm getting there fucking early. I'm coming like three days early just to taunt them the whole time out front. And I can't wait till they wave the battle flag and we run towards each other, you know, like they did in the old days, like in Braveheart, when they run towards each other. Oh, man. And I don't know if we have, like, battle axes at this Civil War or what, what's going to go on, but I sure as hell hope that this guy's carrying some sort of hammer and I get a battle axe. I mean, in this hypothetical Civil War, this fight that he's talking about, because I would pay a lot of money to watch him get his ass kicked. I would pay a shitload of money. I mean, a shitload of money to watch Charlie Kirk get his fucking ass whooped. I would, but I would do it for free. <laughs> I would do it for free. Like, I would show up at the Civil War. I'd run across the field, and that's the first motherfucker. Well, maybe not the first. I might go for Ben Shapiro. Maybe if they're, like, standing, like, in a row, like, you get them, you know, bop, 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 bop. You know, bash their brains in with a baseball bat, like they do on my favorite Nazi-killing movie. Inglorious Bastards. You know, it's just a movie. You don't, don't get all bent out of shape. I'm not breaking terms of service. I'm quoting a movie. I'm making a hypothetical situation here. It's hypothetical. It's not real. These people aren't really going to go to a civil war. Even if there was a civil war, Charlie Kirk would be nowhere near the battlefield. This guy would be hiding in some fucking room somewhere, ordering buses to bus fat people, fat MAGA supporters to the civil war. Blood like bands. he did... Like he did the January 6th insurrection. Did you know that? He bust people to the January 6th insurrection. Him and Turning Points USA. But I'm telling you, man. I'm the first one on the battlefield that Charlie's there. So, Charlie. Honestly, man. I'll, I'll come on your show, too. We'll talk about the Civil War. We'll talk about. We'll strategize, like, where we want to have it. Right? We can talk about, like, what the rules are. I mean, I know you're going to break the rules. So, I'm definitely going to break the fucking rules. This guy's going to fight if they don't get their way. Literally, he's telling you out loud, we're big ass fucking babies. And if we don't, if I don't get my way, I'll, I'll throw a fit, mom. I'll throw a fit right here in this grocery store if you don't buy me that fucking Cheeto Dollar cereal. Six hostages. If you don't, if you don't throw me that cereal, if you don't buy me that Cheeto dust cereal, I'll totally throw a fit right here in the store. I just might go to the Capitol and smear my shit on the wall. I just might do it, Mom. I just might, because I don't get my way. You fucking pussy. You goddamn little fucking bitch. And and, and they're always fucking lecturing us about how, oh, they got red, red. You're, you're, the left is intolerant, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we are intolerant of your bullshit. We're not going to put up with your bullshit anymore. The fucking bunch of nonsense, man. You don't get your way. You don't get to have a tr King Trump. You're going to lose, so you're going to have some sort of civil war, a bloodbath. Okay, bring the bloodbath on. Bring it on, Charlie. Bring it on, you little potato-headed bitch. Let's do it. Let's have your fucking civil war. You, yeah, yeah, fuck, you can name the place, too. You can name the fucking place, and I'll show up to that fucking civil war. Because that's what people who fight for democracy do. They don't fucking bitch and moan about being offended. I'm offended. You called Marjorie Taylor Greene a skank? Because she's a skank. She's a skank. And she's trying to take away people's rights. Yeah, she's a fucking skank. You know, women who used to be in politics used to have some fucking balls. I mean, Marjorie Taylor Greene's probably got balls. But not those kind of balls. I'm talking about, like, fucking strength, man. She'll fucking lay down. She'll tell you how it is, bitch. She ain't gonna beat around no fucking bush. She's gonna show you exactly what she is and where she is and how she is because she's a woman and she don't give a fuck. She knows she's stronger than you. And I come across the clip and it makes its way around the internet every now and again. Of a really, and I want to show it to you today. Because Ann Richards was the governor of Texas. I don't know if you guys know this. There was a woman governor of Texas in the 90s from like 1991 to 1995. It was the early 90s, right? 
this country was just experimenting about making women politicians, especially governors. <laughs> and Ann Richards did not give a fuck. Issues, do you agree? She did not give a fuck. Oh, I got to turn this shit down. Hang on. She did not care. She didn't care. She would tell you exactly how she felt. And I'm going to give you a clip of exactly how she felt. Issues, do you agree? And disagree with them about. Well, number one, I disagree with both of them on abortion. I think a woman has a right and every woman has a right and no government, no government should interfere whatsoever in a woman's decision about whether or not to have children. I mean, uh, hey, hey, no, wait, don't jump all over that guy. Uh, let, let me tell you, I have seen more children in a world of hurt as a consequence of their birth to people who did not want them and could not care for them than I have from people who've had abortion. And, and I want to respect anybody who has a moral disagreement with that. But you disagree in your own life, don't tell the government to legislate what my daughters or my granddaughters or other women must do. And that's it. That's the ideology. That's it. You can have your fucking stupid ass beliefs. Fuck, I'm even okay with you dying carrying a goddamn dead fetus inside of you. I'm 100% behind you. And I will go to that fucking, I will go to that battlefield and fight. I will fight Charlie Kirk in that civil war. For you to have the right to kill yourself because you want to go to full term with a dead fetus. That is your fucking right. That is your fucking liberty. It's dumb. Sounds dumb to me. Whatever you want to do. It is your fucking right. Oh, you want to have dumb ideas? You want to have dumb bigoted ideas? I will fight for your right to have dumb bigoted ideas. But don't, don't you think for one fucking second that you get to tell the rest of us what we are going to be and what we're going to do. No, 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 no. You get to have your fucking stupid fucking beliefs. You are allowed and you have the liberty in this country to be a dumb motherfucker. Dumb motherfucker. But you do not get to legislate us to be as stupid and as delusional as your dumb ass. That is not how it's going to work. So sit down, shut the fuck up. The people who like to read books and the adults in the room are talking fox breath, you fucking boneheads. Enough of that shit. Now I want you to really let this sit in after you just heard what Ann Richardson just said. This woman was the governor. She was the governor of Texas. Really fucking let that sink in for a minute. Let that sink in. She was the governor of Texas. I know it feels like that should not be reality. But it was a reality at a time. And we can get back there. We can get back on a timeline where there are people in Texas that will stand up and say, no, you don't get to tell us. What the fuck you're going to do, what we're going to do just because you believe something that you want to do in your own fucking home on your own fucking time, fucko. Go, you don't have to watch fucking Pornhub, okay? You ain't got to watch Pornhub. You ain't got to go out in public if you don't want to see people, right? If you don't want to see certain types of people, don't go and just stay in your fucking house. It's 2024. Hell, you can order almost anything online to be delivered directly at your fucking door. You don't even have to leave your goddamn house anymore. You can get a job online too if you want to. You have so much fucking liberty in this country, but you will not. You will not think that it is your freedom to take away the rights of other people. That is not liberty. It's not. And again, this woman was the governor of fucking Texas. There is hope, folks. There is hope for Texas. We can do it. I'm telling you. All you have to do is engage in your democracy. Use your strategic outrage every fucking day. 
speaking every day, come watch this show every fucking weekday, Monday through Friday, noon Eastern, 11 Central, 9 Pacific, broadcasting from the Antiba Corporate Headquarters in Commie Falls, Missouri, on YouTube, Facebook, the Twitch Machine, x Chan, and Instagram. The audience is growing. The message is going far and wide. We are offending people, and we are offending the correct people. Do not give in. Defend your democracy. Press, press, press. Same time, same place tomorrow. Surf's up, motherfuckers. You've been listening to the Tony Michaels Podcast. Podcast. In your face commentary of current events and political news. No rules, no boundaries. I think we've made that perfectly clear. We hope you enjoyed the show and we'll be back soon. In the meantime, follow Tony on social media at the Tony Michaels. And until next time, raise a fist and repeat after me. Fuck them. Murphy's Mealborn, head ass speaking. But doesn't the buck stop with you? I mean, you're on it. I have to say, I, I, choose your question carefully. There's five minutes left. Okay, but so is this the same question you want to ask? Same question is you said you said that they are killing the company, but you're the head of the company. The buck doesn't stop with you. I acquired X in order to preserve freedom of speech in America, the First Amendment, and I'm going to stick to that. And if that means making less money, so be it. So I have to be listen. I, I'm just being honest, right? I'm not trying to like get you or anything i was just surprised that you would blame other people for killing the company i mean you're the i mean when you say the buck stops with the president of the united states regardless of what happens right so i why would this why would that question upset you seem upset by it are you i think you i'm not trying to upset you the way, well you are upsetting me because the way you're phrasing the questions i think is is not cogent um it's not uh, what not cogent cogent yes go ahead uh so uh the if 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 given a choice where an advertiser is saying like you have to censor all this content on the, on the platform irrespective of where they're advertising appears uh then our ass will be like look you 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 can choose where you want your advertising what you want your advertiser to appear next to but you can't insist on censorship of the entire platform if you insist on censorship of the entire platform even where your advertising doesn't appear uh then uh Obviously, we will, we will not uh, want them as an advertiser. So what, what would you say to advertisers to, who have left the platform or who are considering coming back or not coming back? What would you like to say to them? Well, first of all, uh, almost all of our advertisers are coming back to the platform. So it's a very short list of advertisers who are not coming back to the platform. Um, and uh, our advertising revenue is rising rapidly. Uh, and our subscription revenue is rising rapidly, and I feel very optimistic about the future of the X platform. Okay. Listen, I'm, not, I'm honestly, I'm not meaning to offend you. You're an intense person. Where does that intensity come from? I was born that way. And I had a tough childhood. You did? So, yeah. How uh, so? Right, Walter Isaacson goes into it in the book, and, and we only have a couple minutes left, so. All right. Too long to, to describe. Uh, so the one or two questions I can do, and then we'll have to call it. I, okay. Again, I don't mean to upset you. Why are you, you just. No, I, I have a whole room full of people waiting to meet with me. Okay. So we're just going over time. Okay. All right. I understand that. Um, so. The